In this video, we're going over the top 10 Osmo Pocket tips and tricks. Hello everyone, my name is Keith, and in this video, we're going over the top 10 Osmo Pocket tips and tricks. I've been using this camera for a few months now, and there are a few things that I learned, and there are a few things that if you do them correctly, you will get really good results from this camera. And the first one is knowing what mode to use. Do you need to use follow, tilt lock, or FPV mode? Because they all act very differently, but they can all give you really good results in certain situations. To go over the modes really quickly, follow mode will follow the direction you're pointing the Osmo Pocket, Tilt locked will lock on the horizon no matter what way you're moving the gimbal, and FPV mode will move with the camera. They all act very differently, but they can all give you pretty cool results. Tip number two is know when to use the follow speeds. You can use fast follow or slow follow. When you're trying to get cinematic footage, using slow follow will give you very smooth results. But if you're going for action, definitely toggle over to fast follow. In fast follow mode, you can capture action a lot better, but it is not as forgiving as slow mode and smoothing out those actions. So you have to be really mindful of moving the gimbal in fast follow mode. When it comes to changing follow speeds, it seems like tilt lock and follow modes are more responsive to the slow and fast follow. FPV mode that I'm in right now just seems to be responsive all the time. That's just something to keep in mind when you're using FPV mode. Tip number three is using active track. The Osmo Pocket has really good tracking and whenever you lock onto a subject, you can walk pretty much anywhere and it will still target that subject as long as you keep it within the frame and it doesn't overlap another object. It does kind of lose things if there's uh, something in the foreground and your objects in the background. When you keep moving, it'll try its best to lock on, but in my experience, it doesn't do well when you lose the subject. But if you can keep the subject somewhat within frame, the Osmo Pocket does a really good job at tracking it. While there isn't a traditional hyperlapse function in the Osmo Pocket software, you can fake your own hyperlapses and they look really good using active track and just walking slowly in video mode and then speeding it up in post. Something to note about active track though, it is not available in FPV mode or 4K60 which is kind of a bummer. Tip number four is getting proper exposure with this camera, especially if you are using a flat profile like D-Cine-like and you wanna color grade your footage. Using the histogram and the zebra stripes, or as they call the uh, Mimo software overexposure, can really help you when you're trying to get a proper exposure of this image. Being able to read the histogram and knowing if there's any zebra stripes showing up on your image can really help you get the proper exposure. Having a good set of ND filters can help you properly properly expose your image, especially if you are in a bright environment. I have the Polar Pro ND 4, 8, and 16 filters. I find myself using the ND 8 a lot uh, in the middle of the day. The ND 16 is probably something I would use in the middle of summer. Uh, in Ohio, uh, the winter time is pretty dark, so uh, ND 4 and ND 8 are usually my go-tos here. But without those filters, I definitely could not get a properly exposed shot adhering by the 180 degree shutter rule. Also, if you're setting exposure using your phone, be mindful not to cover the ambient light sensor because that will affect the uh, brightness of your screen. The fifth tip is motion lapses and time lapses. Motion lapses are really easy to create with the Osmo Pocket and they might be my favorite feature of this whole camera. The ability to put this thing down, set some points in the Mimo app, and just have it pan automatically is awesome. After you're done shooting your time lapse or motion lapse, the Osmo Pocket will generate a 1080p version of your time lapse, and it will also generate the images in the time lapse folder. If you're going for a high quality time lapse, take the time lapse folder and bring it into Premiere or QuickTime, and it will assemble a video for you that is much larger than that 1080p version. And if you need to adjust your pictures beforehand, you can bulk edit them in Lightroom. The results you'll get are much better than just editing that 1080p version. 
But if you just need a quick version to send to a friend or put out on Instagram, the 1080p version is really nice to have. My sixth tip for the Osmo Pocket is to use the grid lines. If you're using tilt locked mode, the gimbal is actually really good at not losing the horizon. If you're using follow or FPV mode, having the grid lines enabled will really help you keep a consistent horizon or just to follow an object better. Grid lines can also help you frame your shot quickly. If you're dynamically moving around an object, you can keep the object on one of those grid lines for a very consistent looking image. My seventh tip for the Osmo Pocket is to use dynamic camera movements. The Osmo Pocket is great at smoothing out vertical movements. Physically moving the camera can get you some really dynamic results, especially when you're close to a foreground object and your background object is a little farther away. Bonus points for tilting or panning the camera while you're moving. This is a great way to turn boring shots into very interesting dynamic shots. My eighth tip for the Osmo Pocket is to film directly up. This camera has the unique ability to be using it in a normal orientation, but the lens can be pointed directly up at the sky, can give you some really unique results that you don't really see every day. My ninth tip for the Osmo Pocket is to use accessories. And in my pros and cons video, I went over that if you buy the Osmo Pocket, you'll probably need some accessories to go along with it to get the most out of your Osmo Pocket. The good news is the Osmo Pocket can be adapted to the GoPro action camera style mounting system. So if you're a GoPro user, you can use all of your existing mounts if you buy an Osmo Pocket holder to go into your GoPro mounts. If you don't have a GoPro already, you can buy a cheap accessory kit on Amazon that comes with the Osmo Pocket holder to action camera mount. And this is mounted to the quarter 20 tripod adapter. So I can now mount this on any quarter 20 tripod screw and stick it anywhere. It also comes with a suction cup mount and I use this in my car or on a window if I'm filming a time lapse of something happening outdoors. And it's a little clunky and big, but it works pretty well. The kit on Amazon also comes with a bike mount and a cheap tripod and a cheap um, selfie stick. The 10th tip for the Osmo Pocket is to make sure you have enough space on your memory card before you go out and film. But if you don't have enough space or you fill up your memory card while you're shooting and you don't have another one, the Osmo Pocket will use your phone's camera roll as a memory card and you can continue to film on your Osmo Pocket as long as your phone has enough storage. A few quick bonus tips about the Osmo Pocket. You can listen to headphones and listen to music while you're filming on the Mimo app. I went out and took this on the trail by our house and I usually have headphones in when I'm walking on the trail. And without even thinking, I was listening to music and I went to record. And usually when I record on my phone's app, it pauses my music. But I was really pleasantly surprised that recording on the Mimo app didn't pause my music. It made walking on the trail really fun. If you're using a phone and Osmo holder and you're recording audio with the Osmo Pocket, I would recommend putting your phone in airplane mode because I got a text while I was filming and it sounded like a swarm of bees was behind my Osmo Pocket. Uh, the microphone is on the bottom and on the side and it's right next to your phone. So all of the audio was completely trashed. The video was fine, however, though. I was really surprised that it didn't have that shake whenever you get a text. So I recommend putting your phone in airplane mode if you're going to use this with a holder. My final tip for the Osmo Pocket is to turn the volume down on your phone all the way if you're using the Mimo app. Because if you accidentally hit that S for the story mode on the top right hand corner of the screen, music will blast out of your phone's speakers immediately and there's no way to like immediately silence it, you have to go back. And if you're in a quiet room, it will take a lot of people off guard. I'm speaking from experience on this one and I've only made that mistake once and I will never make it again. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video, this is by no means an exhaustive 10 tips and tricks for the Osmo Pocket list, but these are the ones when I was using the Osmo Pocket for the last few months, these ones came up over and over again, so I thought it would be great to compile them into a video for you guys. If you would like to see more videos like this, please let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. I'm making a lot more Osmo Pocket and drone videos in the future, and I would love to have you guys around, and I'll see you in the next one.